Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to my new Let's Play series. This is Finding Paradise, the sequel and also kind of not sequel uh, by the maker of To the Moon, which is a game I adore. And if you guys haven't seen my Let's Play of To the Moon, uh, I will have a link in the description bar. I think it was a pretty good Let's Play. And now I'm finally getting into this. I think it was over a year ago that I played To the Moon, so... Yeah, we're gonna finally be doing Finding Paradise. Relatively short game, so it shouldn't be too long of a Let's Play. Alright, anyway, we're gonna get on, and let's begin. Of course, you got the beautiful music and the pixel art. Oh, oh, this is starting kind of like... <laughs> kind of like to the moon. Is it going to avoid it? Oh, oh, oh. Wow, okay. All right, a little bit of a callback there. <laughs> oh, there's Eva and Neil. I love these two. Dr. Neil. What the F, Ava? That's how you keep everyone alive, including the squirrel. What died in the to the moon at the beginning? The rabbit? Or was it a squirrel? I hope you learned something. Look, sometimes it's either us or them. No, Neil's got it right on this one. If they're as sad as it is, if there's an animal that you're gonna hit, you just you you don't want to swerve because you're gonna potentially get into an accident. And I love animals, and I feel bad saying that, but that's just good driving. By keeping ourselves alive now, we can be around to stop more self-inflicted critter casualties later. Logic. Enlightening. We should be arriving at the patient soon. I could use a snack before then. Do you mind? Wow, only you would pack the glove box full of apples. Yeah, well, my nephew decorates the Christmas tree with them every year. And then I have to eat them for ages. Apples on a Christmas tree, huh? Don't you dare say it. <laughs> Don't you mean pineapples? <laughs> I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, and then we got two little kids as well. Whoa, check out this rad bike. Why can't we go to work on these instead? Because we are here to visit dead people, not to get ourselves killed. <laughs> and Eva's got a point there. Everybody I know who's had a motorcycle, has gone into an accident at some point. And I will never ride on one. Really? I couldn't tell after the trauma of you driving like a stunt double. <laughs> Besides, we're visiting half-dead people. Very different things. Yeah, well, let's hurry and keep it that way. All yours. Let's roll. Like a cucumber. <laughs> What? <laughs> you know, cucumber rolls? Sushi? He's like, leave the puns to me. Yeah, uh, no. That's quite a stretch. Hmm, there's a leaking sprinkler over there. Hey now, what happened here? Potato? She, she kicked my teddy into the water. Yeah, well, it's a dumb bear. Just like your lame hair. Who looks like that? But Ma said my bun buns are pretty. I was like, of all the things to make fun of, you're gonna name make fun of the hair? Not the fact her name is Potato? <laughs> yeah, well, she also named you. 
Uh, don't worry, we'll get your bear back. Actually, let me take care of this. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm telling you, I got this one. Uh, let's go with- let's go with Neil. Hey. What? Huh. Is that also hers? No, that's mine, you doofus. It's the new Rebel Doll X3000. They're cool because they got attitude and don't care. Unlike wimpy teddy bears, they- <laughs> Oh my god, amazing. That's- he's like, there we go, I helped. <laughs> Neo, what the what the jalapeno did you do? What? What do you mean, what? You just took some kid's doll and kicked it into the water. You could get sued for- Yay! <laughs> You're my hero. No probs, kid. In your face! <laughs> I like Neil's way of solving problems. This is so messed up. Justice is cold and damp, Eva. I love her dancing, kinda like a tuna. So I guess there's not much we can do. We can't go get the teddy bear. All right, let's go. Let's just look around, see if there's anything to comment on. I just love the comments these guys do. I don't think so. All right. Hello. Hey there, this is Dr. Rosaline and Dr. Watts from Sigmund. You're actually here. Yeah, hope we're on time. Um, are you letting us in? I'll wait outside the door for you. What was that? What was what? Did you not feel the blast of ice through the monitor? Well, if she's the patient's spouse, then she's got a dying spouse. It's not like we're here to lay out a picnic. Alright, maybe it's just me. Hello, may I help you with something? We can wait till you set that down, my box-carrying comrade. <laughs> Thanks, bro, you really get me. <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh, wait. There we go. Here to fulfill someone's dying wish, huh? How'd you know? This is the second time I've seen a visit from your company this week. Who is it this time? Colin Reeds. Know of him? The retired pilot? Yeah, he lives on the top floor. Go on and give him the happy ending he deserves, probably. Spouses, am I right? Hmm? Always make the job so cumbersome. <laughs> Depends on- I thought he was going to make a joke about cucumbers. Depends on the person. Dr. Rosaline, is it? And Dr. Watts, ahem. <laughs> yes, we're here for Colin. Of course, thank you both for coming. Right this way. Act one. Tell me, what do you want to change? Oh, this is a quaint place you got here. Colin's in the other room. Come with me. Right down to business. I like that. Do you actually? Yeah, because right now I just really need to put this box down. Oh, 
A wedding, a wedding photo hangs behind the TV. The couple looks happy. I was thinking, I was like, I can't really interact with anything this time, but now I can. Now we're just gonna snoop, 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 as I always do. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's meet the patient first before rampaging through his property. Gee, when did you become so noble? I think I set this into the moon, but I am... I would be such a snoopy person, so this would be a good job for me. You must be here for my father. You're the patient's son? Yeah, I came as soon as I heard. But we can talk later. Why don't you get set up first? That box looks heavy. See? He gets it. Where's the medical doctor? He's here. He just went to the washroom. Is that table over there enough to get set up? Yeah, that'll do. Are you guys ready to get settled? Uh, oh yeah, we want to look around. Not yet. My colleague could use some more workout carrying the equipment around. She's always taking care of me. Yeah, I want to see this machine. I guess not. Where are you two going? <laughs> Just stretching my legs. <laughs> and breaking my back. Rosa Rosaline's not exactly, or Eva, she's not exactly the most, uh, you know, inconspicuous person when it comes to just snooping around. I'm just gonna, let me just go on the computer, an unplugged computer. Alright, alright, I'll stop. Delaying it. Yeah, just give us a moment. Is the power here sufficient? Why does everyone keep asking that? It'll work fine, sheesh. But first, brace yourselves for a power outage of cinematic proportions. Well, considering that there's a monitor where, you know, it's reading his vitals, I'm sure it's not a bad question to ask that it's not going to blow out the power source. Huh, I guess he got a more stable power grid than our headquarters. That's equally comforting as it is worrisome. You're in good hands. We do this all the time. Too much of the time, if you ask me. So you t uh, so you two are for real? What do you mean? You can really fulfill his wish? We'll certainly try our best, ma'am. But we always succeed, because... It would only be in his head, though. Not like he'd be able to tell the difference. Anywho, fess up. What is it that he wants? He wouldn't tell us. He said it doesn't affect us and we have nothing to worry about. Well, that sounds legit. Look, that's... that's okay. We'll find out from him soon enough. Isn't it also in the paperwork? Yeah, but who reads that stuff? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But seriously, where did the file go? It wasn't in the box? Nope. Guess I might have left it in the car. Alright, I guess we got time while the machine's booting up anyway. And this is like to the moon too, where I had to go into the car and get something. Uh, I'll go. Well, someone's gotta go get it. And that someone could be you. But you're the one who forgot it. Exactly. Do you want me to go back there and forget it again? I've updated the system. It's practically configuring itself now. Cool, that'll save some time. All right down, uh, already down to business, huh? Hey, I recognize you. Yeah, it's been a while. Although, weren't Dr. Winters and Dr. Lynn assigned to this patient instead? 
Yeah, but they had a full roster at the time, so we took over. Save their arses. Ironically, it turned out they got nothing to do today. Hmm, I guess you never know the timing with the nature of your job. Anyhow, don't mind me. I'm just going to go check on the patient. Was she, the st was she the same doctor from the first one? Here, I got something for you. Received remote patient monitor. Alright, Colin's heart monitor is now activated. Press escape or right click to open menu. Excellent. Now him having a heart attack would probably give me one too. Yep. Don't you have to go get something before we can get started? Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> By the way, you should knock on the neighbor's door on the way out. Uh, why? If I remember right, someone from that address just signed up with Sigmund last week. And since we're treated like angels of death and all, could be a fun prank. Can I actually do that? I'm certainly gonna try. Is there anything I can help with? I'm just gonna go get something from the car, but you could show Miss- uh, you could show Dr. Watts around in a bit. Okay, understood. His family talks very, I'm not gonna say robotically, but very formally. Alright, can I break in and look at stuff now? <laughs> ah, here we go. You know what? I have time for this. I will do this later. I assume I'll have time later. Okay, so they said to go to the neighbors and knock on the door. Oh, cool. Okay, press Q or mouse click to switch between characters. Well, it's entered automatic configuration mode. It does that now? Yep, my handiwork with the sole purpose of setting myself free to play hooky. But instead, I gotta go gather background info on the patient. Well, I'll go keep an eye on the patient. That's how you get lazy eye. Keep both eyes on him, please. I don't know if that was an option in the first game. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, F, you're from Sitcore. <laughs> Am I really dead? Uh, no. Don't lie to me. I just signed up for your services last week. They said you'd come for me when it's time. <laughs> I already told you, we're not here for you. No, I, I'm not prepared. I can't die yet. <laughs> oh, I know. You're not really here. I'm just seeing things. I just drank too much. Tralala. -la. <laughs> Wonder if I can interact with those kids. Oh, speaking of, it looks like she got her bear back. Hey, you got your bear back. Yep, a nice lady in a brown dress swooped into the pond and got it for me. Swooped? Yeah, she didn't even touch the water. Right, please tell your parents to watch your sugar intake. Hello, box comrade. Done already? He didn't die on you, did he? No, just forgot something, but gosh, I sure hope not. Oh, if only I could move a little faster. <laughs> Who's dying, dear? Pardon me, ma'am? That coat and tag. You're from Sigmund. If you're here, then someone's time is up. Colin reads, do you know him? I see. He and his wife used to stroll with my husband and me here every day. Please do your best for him, dear. You sound rather accepting of his fate. After years of seeing everyone around you go, it's hard not to be. But then, you of all people should know that well. Hey, Eva, maybe not a good idea to like... I don't know, I feel like that might be a little bit of confidential information. To just giving that out to people, letting them know people are, you know, who's dying. <laughs> Ah, 
wonder if she's got a comment about the motorcycle. Or not, okay. The file isn't in the car either. That doofus must have left it in the office. Eva! Hey, Roxy. Still at the office? Yep. Just waiting on the elevator. Not that you'd understand, with it opening instantly for you every time. What? <laughs> That's a myth. I wait for elevators, too. Yeah? When was the last time it didn't open instantly? Uh... See? You're either freakishly lucky, or... Okay, okay. For pumpkin's sake. <laughs> Look, Neil forgot the patient's file. Could you help us out? Okie dokie, po uh, Pocky Loki. Just give me a minute. Mission accomplished? Neil, the file wasn't in the car. Oh, I forgot at the office, didn't I? It's fine. I called Roxanne. She's gonna find it and send over a scan. Oh. Well, my office is locked, but she should check the printer in the lobby. Yep, she's on it. I'm heading back soon. Did you find it, Rox? Yep, it was just sitting on Neil's table. Cool beans, just scan it and... Wait, Neil's table? You're inside Neil's office? <laughs> yep, you asked me to get the files, right? Yeah, but Neil said he had his door locked. Oh, a girl's got her ways. <laughs> Elaborate. Not like that, silly. I just hacked his electronic lock like a slice of cheese. Oh, okay. Well, uh, just get out of there and send me a scan, would you? Yep, yep, on it. Oh, she is... I mean, I guess you have to have some sort of cur uh, curiosity if you work at a place like this, but man, it's sneaky sneaky. You guys got everything else you need? I'm gonna learn something about Neely's hiding? Yep, Neil's setting up the machine right now. How's the weather out there? Huh? Is it nice out for a drive? Oh, something's up. Okay, she's gotta talk to her in person. Or Neil, it's not bad. Neato, I think I'll just come over and get the file... I uh, get you the file in person then. Um, why? Just scan it and send it over. It saves time for us both. Well, we've got no patience today, and it's boring here anyway. Anyhow, don't worry. I'll get there before you guys are done. See you both then. Okay, Roxy. Have a safe drive. Don't run to any squirrels. Or do. Uh, don't swerve. <laughs> what an oddball, that Roxanne. Configuring system to patient Neurolink. What is it? Alright, call in status. How's our guy doing? He's in stable condition, at least for now. We're ready to proceed when everything's set up. Good stuff. Eva's just getting something from the car while the machine configures. Uh, past encounters. You again, eh? Small world. Which patient did we work with last again? Hmm, I believe it was Aubrey Jones. And before then, Raul Perez, Maya Green, and Johnny Wiles. That dates quite some time back. What are you, the reigning memory champ? Frankly, I'd be more surprised if you don't remember each one of their names. Uh, he doesn't seem like the most memor- like, a person with the best memory, considering he forgot to, uh, you know, like, forgot the file. And he just seems like a little bit of a space cadet. But I guess since I don't do this all the time like you guys, it's easier for me to recall them. I never said I forgot any of them. Alright, Doc's name. Excuse me for being more of a face guy, but I somehow can't recall your name. That's okay, I prefer to just be called Doctor. Oh, I bet you'd like that, you hooligan. Yes? Okay, about Colin. Could you tell me more about your husband? 
Why? Won't you be going into his head to see for yourself? Uh, you never know what additional perspectives would come in handy. I don't know what I could tell you that you won't be able to see. She's very, uh, hmm, secretive. Anything? Oh, I could help with Doc? Seeing as we're gonna get your father's head and all, some background info would help. Well, he's a retired airline pilot and quite the people person. Kind of the opposite of the wife. Worked hard to support the family from the ground up and always made time for us. Although, more recently. But recently what? Well, nothing unexpected at this stage of life, I suppose. Look, I'd rather not write out tombstone texts before they're due. Why don't I show you around before your colleague comes back? Maybe that would help. Sweet, spares me the asking. Asher has joined the party. <laughs> Dusty cello, a cello with quite a few scratches across the board. This is my father's old cello. He played it a lot back in the days. Seems like it hasn't been touched in a while. Yeah, I guess it's hard on the wrist. He usually just plays the scales, though. It's not exactly music to be enjoyed. And once again, music coming in again, right? Like with To the Moon. A lot of parallels so far, it seems like. An aged digital piano. He plays this, too? No, this is my mother's. She used to lull me to sleep playing it back in the days. We all have our lullabies. Mine's Beethoven's Fifth. Guess nothing here. A model of a small fixed wing aircraft. That's a neat piece. Yeah, that's my dad's. I guess it reminds him of back when he trained flying those. A pot of homegrown hibiscus. Huh, aren't these tropical? I wouldn't know any better. My mother takes care of them. We've had these around the house for as long as I can remember. I guess it's some kind of a family tradition. Your parents' wedding photo, huh? Yeah, that's them. I remember being embarrassed about that picture as a kid, but it's kind of sweet that they kept it so well. I don't think there's anything in here for us, but... An apartment with- I was thinking the same thing, I was like, what? Because they're in an apartment complex, an apartment with two floors? Reminds me of a double-decker bus. Most of this floor is for maintenance, we just got a little storage room cut out. Sorry about the mess, it seems like they've been doing a bit of a cleanup. Looks like they missed one. I think I recognize that book. It's been around for quite a while. My dad kept it taped up. I guess he didn't want to throw it away. Yep, it's taped up alright. He doesn't want anyone reading it, eh? Well, under normal circumstances, I'd say to leave it alone for privacy's sake. But he did sign up to become your client, so I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, let's, uh, the Snoopy part of me wants to. Plus, it could have some important information for the sake of science and, uh, the client. Holy crap. What? What is it? Nothing. <laughs> huh? Literally nothing. It's just a bunch of blank, wrinkled papers. Seems like they were just glued back on the spine, too. That's odd. It's been around for eight. It's been around for ages, though. Maybe whatever on there was faded. I suppose. But either way, I can't do much with this as it is. Let's look somewhere else. Faded old painting of a flying single-engine plane. 
So, so far, the hibiscus, a tropical flower, the things about the plains, finding paradise. Is it something about traveling to maybe somewhere tropical he never got to go to? Or maybe it's like up, you know, where it's like uh, Carl wants to go to uh, the falls. I can't remember where it was where him and, and Ellie wanted to go to and he never got a chance to go. Trying to think of like what this dream could be. Um, let's go ahead and check our notes so far. It's a green book filled with blank pages. Hibiscus. The family kept a pot of hibiscus around the house. Uh, Colin used to work for the airlines as a commercial pilot. Age cello. Colin plays the cello apparently not well though. I was like, as a pilot, though, I feel like it'd be pretty easy to just fly somewhere. And I'm guessing it has something to do with his wife as well. Like, some sort of unfulfilled dream with his wife. But, I don't know. Alright, have we looked at everything? Maybe there's stuff outside? Eva's already getting the files. No point in heading out. Hopefully, I've seen everything I need to see. Oh, oh okay. I thought this was a different room. <laughs> I feel like I must be missing something because I would assume Neil would say something if I had seen everything I need to see. But as far as I can see, there's nothing else that's like flashing that seems to be important for me to check out. Can I comment on the pictures, maybe? Nope, nope. Okay, never mind. A faded poster of a tropical island there is surrounded by a lagoon and barrier reef. Huh, this looks like the same place as the painting in the bedroom. An antique dust-covered mirror. Boxes of assorted books and appliances. An old deflated soccer ball. Hey, the soccer ball! This sure brings memories back. Yours? <laughs> sure. Got it as a present when I was a kid, if I recall correctly. There we go. Can I turn on the light to... I guess that's all the light I'm gonna have. Sorted things stashed in the bookcase. Flat cap, uh, flat cap hat hangs on the coat rack. Well, now I know I gotta be careful because not necessarily everything I need to find is going to be highlighted for me, so. It's locked. Maybe if I get Sophia to do a tour with me, she'll have different, um, you know, conversations with me and give me more hints. So maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need them both to uh, give me a tour. Is there nothing in the kitchen at all that I can... Uh... Oh, there we go. Ah! Ooh, Eva's gonna love this. <laughs> Hello? Code 32, Eva. Code 32. Is it like triple ply? <laughs> Rectify it. <laughs> nah, I don't wanna. Dag it, Neil. You know what drives me crazy when people just leave it on the counter. <laughs> Put the toilet paper onto the dispenser. Magic word? Put the toilet paper onto the dispenser, please. Well, since you asked nicely. <laughs> the falcon is in the nest. <laughs> what falcon? Is the freaking toilet paper on the dispenser or not? <laughs> yeah, it's there as snug as can be. Thank heavens. <laughs> She's so strange. Anyway, go get things wrapped up. I'm heading back. Thank you. 
I love there was that one thing in the bathroom just for that moment. Oh, actually, there's something else that might help you prepare. Here's the family photo album. It goes way back. Thanks. Never too early to feel like a grandma. I'll go check on my father then. My colleague will be back soon, so I should go get the machine ready too. But I'll flip through this for a bit first. Okay, so obviously the mother seems like she's a maybe a pretty good musician. Maybe the father was at some point too, although it said that his cello playing's not great. Or maybe it's not great anymore. And the mother definitely seems more uh, like she didn't seem as stiff at, in the photos as she does now. Is everything ready? You betcha. How about the file? Has Rock sent the scans? No, she said she's coming over to bring it in person. She what? Why? No clue. She said she was bored, but something felt odd. Then again, you know Roxanne. She's always a little cucumbered up in the head. Whoa, language, Eva. Anyway, I guess we could sit- uh, I guess we could still start in the meantime. Your helmet's on the recliner. Good luck. I hope you can accomplish whatever my father set you out to do. What are you waiting for? Might as well start at this point. Yes, ma'am. We're commencing in just a moment. Oh, can I go into the bathroom? She's like, I just gotta check and make sure that the roll is actually on the dispenser. Colin's condition is looking stable for the moment, but I would hurry. You never know exactly how long we have, and that's why I'm gonna do none of those things. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Commence memory traversal? Alright, let's go. Wait. Before you begin, could you tell me what you'll be doing in there? Uh, we're gonna go through his memories to grant him his last wish, duh. I thought you already knew. Yes, I do know that, but... How? What will you actually be doing? Well... Alright, let's elaborate. We actually don't do much. It's the machine that does most of the work. Says the technician. Who knows best? The machine calculates uh, permutations of possibilities and creates a new tangent of life. In the form of memories, of course. It's an illusion, but to him, it would be indistinguishable memories of a lifetime. However, the permutations in the machine calculates would still have to be logically coherent. So it needs a starting point and a change in a key variable. And that's where we come in. We tunnel through his memories from the most recent to as far back as we need, drawing a line from now to then. We'd then be able to help Colin transfer his current motivations all the way to his past, so, in his simulated life rerun, he'll make all the kick arse decisions and fulfill his own wish. Just by his own volition, is that enough? I'd have thought that fulfilling wishes would take more than just effort and a second chance. I mean, can't you two just make whatever needs to happen, happen? You know what, for a situation like this, it's like, I would, you know, somebody, I can understand why they would want to know this kind of stuff. I am going into his father's brain, right? Perhaps, but one problem. He's not brain-dead. There are a few things that uphold the illusion of reality. Illogical happenstances aren't one of them. And since the world must still be self-coherent, we can't do more than simply influence him. Besides, we don't get paid enough to generate memories manually. It's not a cave painting. There's little need for interference anyhow. Willpower is usually more than enough. Not everyone can reach their goals in real life. Time changes them. Motivations come and go. They always start strong, then plateau, then fade. But in a simulation based on the mental state of a single moment, stretched through a lifetime, 
Let's just say that it's some powerful voodoo mon. <laughs> Anyhow, no amount of volition's going to help a dead man. Shall we proceed? Yes, thank you for the explanation. I don't know what's going to happen in there, but good luck. Luck's for lotteries. We're professionals. Ooh, sharp words. See you on the other side. Patient is stable and ready. Initiate initializing memory traversal sequence in three, two, one. Oh, I'm excited. This is a cool like this is a cool game series because you could just keep doing this again and again with different stories. There's endless possibilities for different stories. All right, this should be Colin's last accessible memory. Yeah, and check out the reigning heavy sleeper champ over here. Leave that memory of her alone. She's not our client. By the way, I want to ask earlier. What's with the helm you put on our patient? Huh? The equipment. It looked different. Oh, I just removed the casing during maintenance, that's all. Then why didn't you put it back? Hey, that reminds me. Did you know I added a new feature? New feature? Behold! <laughs> Never mind, forget I asked. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> what is this? Character customization. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, we gotta go with the afro. Face, smooth lip, yeah, manly hipster stash, Amish paradise, <laughs> rich oil baron. All right, let's go with. Uh... Oh my god, this is fantastic. Let's go with the hipster stash, socks, plain bag, even blacker, gold trim, dead sock puppets, tomato pattern, one red, one gone. <laughs> dinosaurs. All right, let's go with dinosaurs. What other hair do we have here? Well, let's go with the afro. <laughs> this is... Can I do Eva too? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Just why? <laughs> well, I figured if we're gonna spend so much time working here, we might as well travel in style. Where? <laughs> Oops, did I say we? Sorry, I meant... Oh wait, that's exactly what I meant. Oh, can I give her an afro too? <laughs> Tag, you're it! <laughs> Neil, you son of a... <laughs> All right, long flowing locks, pragmatic bun sticks, saucy bangs. Oh, I don't get very many choices for her. I like the bangs, actually. Face classic Eva, grand mustache, <laughs> wizard's beard, regal face carpet. Let's go with the wizard beard. Bright teal socks, giraffe print, fuzzy Hanukkah, Cumber uh, cucumber pattern. More hole than sock. <laughs> Rainbow stripes. Wear silk. Alright. I feel like cucumber works well because she's always like, son of a cucumber. <laughs> what the cucumber, Neil? Or is that a lettuce? I don't know. <laughs> hey, don't blame me. It's the system that chose it for you. Well, the system is a dumb tomato. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't insult the system. That's not cool. Whatever, I'm changing back. Oh, come on, it was a lot of work to implement. Besides, you owe me for what happened at the tofu party last month. Humor me for a bit. Ugh, you did take a solid hit for me at the tofu party. Fine, I'll keep the look until we find Colin. Sweet, nice socks, by the way. Yeah, I'm okay with the socks. <laughs> Alright, the current memory's position and time can be viewed by moving the mouse top, uh, towards the top of the screen. Alright, this is pretty much the same. I love the character customization. Oh, let's turn off world interaction before we wake her up. After all, uh, after all that, I'm surprised we didn't already. It's not polite to stare. Sheesh, and she didn't seem to like us before.
Colin? What the? This isn't a stable copy. Let's find a way we can talk to. Right, note, unstable copy. Alright, let's check that out. Uh, there's an odd- oop! There's an odd instance of Colin on the most recent memories balcony. I'm guessing he's upstairs looking at something in the attic. Maybe that book? Still full here? Seems like he must have cleared it very recently. Huh? This bookshelf. It's got nothing on it now, but one odd book when I checked. And that one's not here. Maybe he's outside. Ugh. Pretty sure the hall didn't look like this. Dude's so old he can't even remember his own home. But isn't the machine supposed to autocorrect that kind of spatial inconsistencies? Well... Oh, hey, look! Target acquired. Let's go. Oh, I thought you forgot. <laughs> nope. Ahem. Blah. All right. Oh, my hard work. <laughs> Thanks. Turning on entity interaction. I was kind of hoping that I could at least Neil would be like, no, I'm gonna stay like this for the whole game. Colin. My name is Dr. Eva Rosaline. I'm a memory traversal specialist at Sigma Core. And my colleague here is Dr. <laughs> Hatton. <laughs> Dr. Ma oh, Manhattan. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to the rest of this, like, this character work customization throughout the game. You're Dr. Neil Watts. How did you know? Your name tag. <laughs> this isn't what it looks to be, is it? Yes, Colin. Your procedure has started. Good. It's not just me, then. Something felt off about this place. It's as if I'm both here and far away at once. Either this isn't where I think I am, or my head's going downhill faster than I thought. More like both, actually. Heh, <laughs> fair enough. My wife and son, how are they handling it? They're... there, right? Yeah, but they aren't prancing around, that's for sure. Although, given the circumstances, I guess I'd be worried if they were. Listen, there's not a lot of time, it's best if we get started. You're the most recent slice of Colin that we can load up. And the only relatively reliable version that we can interact with for info. So, I hope you can assist us in completing the mission. Of course, why would I not? Good, I'll keep your state saved so we won't need to have this conversation again. Psst, run a save on a state! Yes, your highness. <laughs> now, in order to help you relive your life here to fulfill your last wish, we are first going to backtrack through your memories to connect your timeline. And then, we'll be able to transfer your desire all the way back to your younger self. And run the algorithm for you to live your life here all over again to fulfill your wish. Anyhow, Colin, we need your help. To jump between memories, we need mementos. 
There are items of importance to you that connect one memory with another. Do you have one here that we could jump with? Whoa, slow down. We still don't even know what his wish is. What is it that you want anyway, Colin? Actually, I think I can answer both of your questions with this. It's a Sigmund contract. The text is rather blurry, but... It is a memento. Sweet! Let's move. This memento's barrier shatters by itself since it's so recent, but the next one won't be so easy. Oh, I remember the little puzzles, the little slidey things you have to do to connect the images. We'll need to charge it up first. Oh, I guess I do have to do it. Oh wait, what is this? Memories go farthest when linked together. Okay, this is new. Whoops. Ah, that's not the one I meant to do. Okay, anyway. Oh, does that not work? Oh, shoot. How do I do this one? Did I F this up? Um. Hmm. Can I move this up? I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, so I have them all in the same line here, but... Oh, shit. Oh! Oh, down here. <laughs> okay. So I can move them up and down as well. This is definitely interesting. Okay. That caught me off guard for a second, but alright, we got it. And that was the easy one. <laughs> I'll probably be doing diagonal ones next. Thanks, we might come back for your help again. Wait a minute, this place... It's the Sigmund guest house. Oh, where they wine and dine the geezers into signing up for the service. Sure been a while since I visited. Looks a bit different from when I was last here too. Let's check it out. Like, what else could I possibly be interacting with? I'm trying to interact with the sign, but no go there. Oh, there we go. What are you doing outside in the cold, Mr. Reeds? Your appointment is about ready. Please, right this way. Welcome to the Sigmund Core Guest House. Please have a seat in our living room. Are we good to go? Why don't you sit back and enjoy some tea first? You must have come a long way to get here. I need to get back home soon. I'd just like to inquire about your service. 
Very well. Someone will be here to get you shortly. There's so much to the world, isn't there? Much more than one could explore in a single lifetime. Say, wouldn't it be nice to visit where you've always wanted to go? I've already been there, once upon a time. It's always- it seems to be always related to traveling, although, you know, the first episode or first game was the moon. I'm just curious about what, uh, what he could have. I said paradise. I'm guessing somewhere tropical, and like you said, somewhere he's been once before. Maybe that picture of his wife and him on in the on their wedding day seemed like they were somewhere tropical. But I'm like, he's a pilot. I imagine it wouldn't be very hard for him to get back there. So I'm gonna be here to get you shortly. This photo is taken from the stage's perspective. Exhilarating, huh? Not many people get to experience what it's like to be famous. We sure get a lot of requests for that, so if it floats your boat, consider it done. If we have to do another one of these, I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> it's not so bad. At least we get it done fast and go home early. You see, our service is really quite simple. You tell us your wish, and we make it happen. Fame, wealth, unreached goals and secret desires, you name it. We're your genie, Colin. What is your wish? So, if I understand this correctly, you're saying I can't wish for more wishes? Uh, it's dad joke. You know, I've done and seen a lot in my lifetime. I've been to where I once thought I'd never be, see what I once thought I'd never see. But in the blink of an eye, suddenly, there's no more time. And I find myself here just like everyone else. I walk through these doors and I realize that there's still this empty feeling inside me. I don't mean to be ungrateful to the life I've had, but... I just want to feel like I've done enough in this world before I go, you know? I want to say I've lived a happy life, and I want to feel like I have few regrets. But somehow, after all that, I still can't. That's why we're here, Colin. Just give us the word and we'll make it right. Tell us your regrets. What is it that you want us to fix? Regrets. I don't know what to tell you for regrets, but I can tell you what I want. I want you to make me live that fulfilling life I wanted. But I want you to do it without changing anything I've been through. Ooh, tricky. You don't want us to change anything. Colin, changing things is what we do. We change things and we make them better. That's why you come to us, so we can make it better. We can solve your problems. Everything you wanted but couldn't have in this life, we can give you the chance to get it. But if you want to get something, you need to give up something. So I ask again, what do you want as your last wish? Very well. I want you to give me a fulfilling life while changing as little as possible. And if you have to change something, please just keep the memories of the life with my family intact. So, you want to waive specific, uh, specificity from the contract. Oh, yay, vagueness, cool. With something like that, I hope you know there are no guarantees of results. I'm aware. It's settled then. I'll put our best people on it. Thank you, that's all I ask. Try not to change anything, and we have free reign over his fate? What kind of a last wish is that? I don't even know where to start. Eh, we've seen worse. The important thing here is the boss said we'll put our best people on it. We're their best people, Eva. Booyah! <laughs> Actually, about that. Oh, it was supposed to be Roxanne, right? Roxanne and uh, someone else were supposed to be the ones to do it. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, I'm good. Let's go get the memento. 
Think we should go back to the last memory and ask Colin about what he said here? Can't really expect reliable answers from that, but we might eventually have to try. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, though. Let's just continue on for now. What a waste, just sitting here looking pretty. Best docs in the house, booyah! You picked the right people for the job. And then there's still that thing about Roxanne, is what is that thing that she wants to talk to them about? Oh, just one more thing. Please, don't tell my family. I don't want them to think I'm not content with how things are. So, he has a feeling, even though he's had a good life, he had a loving family, he was a pilot, he got to go to all these places and have all these experiences, he still feels like there's something missing. I wonder what it is. You know, I've been rather impressed. What for? Well, back in the days, you kept on yelling, dumb juvenile- Oh yeah, like when he was like, Hadouken! <laughs> dumb juvenilities when shooting the barriers. But recently, I haven't heard any Hadouken or Kamiha- uh, Kamehameha or whatnot. <laughs> it's been rather pleasant and professional. Oh, mm hmm. <laughs> oh, we got purple ones now here, too. Okay. Sometimes only the current memento rings a bell. Better head out now, but before I forget... Here, take this hat, Pops. With the headache you've been getting, you should be more careful of the wind. I've been telling him that for ages. He never listens. Alright, alright. I'll wear it if it stops this multi-directional nagging. Hey, it's been a while since your thing with Pam didn't work out. Listen, I was talking with my old colleague the other day. He's got a daughter named Jenny, you see. She's single, and... Look, thanks, but I think I just really need to focus on my career right now. So, you guys gonna go back to feeding the ducks or something? We wouldn't have to resort to that if you visit us more often, you little bastard. <laughs> I could see my dad talking to me like that, me and my brother. Aw, but that hat is 100% cotton. Well, alright, you're off the hook. <laughs> Drive safe, dear. We'll stay here and keep being overlords of the ducks. <laughs> Bye, Ma. I'm proud of you. Not for the duck thing, but like, you know what I mean. Oh, they seem so sweet. Don't stay out too long at this time of year. That kid needs to make us a grandchild. That also sounds like my parents. <laughs> What's wrong with Jenny, anyway? Probably nothing, but you know how it is. When you were young, didn't your parents try to push people onto you, too? Sure did. It was awkward and forced. Mmm. Sucked all the chemistry out of it for me as well. What are you doing? I'm texting him Jenny's info to set them up. Don't do that. He's driving. Do it after he gets home. Good call. Make sure to include some pictures, too. <laughs> the good ones, with the lighting coming from the side. No words. <laughs> Regret. No grandkids. Oh, don't be doing this to me, man. Like, my parents haven't said anything, but, like, I can tell they want grandkids. I'm just like, this is getting real right now. <laughs> Send the pics with no duck face. Yep. S send her some pics of Asher, too. The ones where his eyebrows are on point. <laughs> Got it. Oh, there's that motorcycle. 
Was this Collins, I wonder? Hmm. <laughs> Are you serious? One for each duck? I was just about to say that. I'm not complaining. Wish there was a whole flock. Alright, let's check the notes again. Ducks. They quack things up. Regret. No grandkids. Colin wanted grandkids. Colin's wish to die happy while changing as little as possible. Well, I'm guessing having uh, grandkids would be a pretty big change. My granddaughter turns five this year. Can you believe it? She's growing big so fast. I'm thinking of making my, making my knitting modular. <laughs> Time really flies, huh? No kidding. I didn't even realize how old I was getting until I broke my other hip. Word of advice? Don't go breaking your hip. <laughs> yeah, I've been lucky on that front so far. Seriously, I shouldn't even be out right now. Uh, why are you out right now? It's like just a bag of loose bones rattling around in there, I tell ya. Just clanging and cluggling. Clugging and clanging. How are you even standing up? <laughs> uh, can I not? Oh, I guess I can't go inside. Uh, there must be something I'm missing here. Maybe another duck. I need- oh, there's Sophia. What's this? Their call card. I printed out another. Sigmund Core. What made you change your mind? I still feel the same way about it. But some days I wake up and see you on the balcony looking out like that. You don't say it, but I know there's something that still aches you. Tell me, are you happy? Of course I am. I have you and Asher. Then why do you want to go through with their services? Just because I'm happy doesn't mean I don't have regrets. Not that I'd be- not that I would be related to you two, anyhow. Call them. But when you go through the procedure and live that new life, just hold on to something from here. It's not like that, Fia. I won't forget about you. Okay, well, I can see why Sophia is maybe a little bit cold to Eva and Neil. Is maybe she does think deep down inside that Colin has regrets about something to do with her. And she kind of resents them for, like, maybe changing the memories of them. Hey. I think I forgot to bring duck food. <laughs> huh, me too. <laughs> well, that explains her attitude. I told you there was something up with her. You know, she could always sign up with Sigcor for a life where Colin never signed up with Sigcor. Har har. Alright, what is going to be... Is it going to be a duck? <laughs> is a duck going to be the memento? I get... Oh! Alright. Go. 
What the? Wait, what? <laughs> Don't be turned to a horror game on me now. <laughs> that was weird. Something going on with Neil. Something in his office, obviously, that uh, alerted, uh, what's her name, Roxanne. I still want to know about that. What was in that, like, secret compartment that she found? What took you so long? I thought I saw someone weird back there. Huh. Did you say that to their face and hurt their feelings? Uh, weird as in they were watching from the woods. Watching from the woods? Was that Roxanne? Yeah, and when I looked, it almost seemed like they... Ugh, never mind, it's stupid. Okay, Eva, be honest now. Have you been reading too much dusk like? I already said never mind. They were static anyway, so it was no one important. Hmm. Well, you'll be happy to hear that while you were staring at nothing, I've scouted this memory out. Wait, what? I was only behind you by a few seconds. Huh, nice try, Slowpoke. Anyhow, here's what's going on here. In the kitchen, they have a fight about what we suspect from the last memory. Bam. After that, they make up and play music together over there. Cue, aww, etc, etc. Oh, and then Colin goes to sulk on the balcony. The end. <laughs> Dude, spoilers. Aren't always a bad thing when we're on the job. But here, I even picked up a memory link for you to make up for it. And if you want to see everything yourself so much, then just don't use my unlocks. I'm not going, Fia. rather ghostly when the audio and visuals don't quite sync up. That is awe, though. And I know they say that he's not good anymore at uh, playing the cello, but he was very good. Oh, this looks familiar. Oh, I'm I can't get over how beautiful the music is in these games, though. I don't understand. Why would you even consider... Why would you toss aside everything we have for something make-believe? I'm not tossing anything aside. I mean, don't you have regrets, too? Yes, but I actually have respect for what I've been through here. What we've been through here. Tell me, what do you want to change? I want... I mean... There are so many little things that could have just been better. Better. And if you call Sigmund, what would you ask for? I don't know what to tell you, Fia. Then the least you could have done is to make up something nice, isn't it? Remember, Colin is our client. Everything else is fluff. I know. I imagine it would still be hard to not get a little bit emotionally invested in these. You know, in the client's stories. Maybe there's something up the stairs? Oh, guess I'm not able to go. We 
we all have regrets, be it writing a wrong or a dream long past. Or perhaps that one special someone. If you've got to do it all over again, who would you be? Where would you go? At Sigmund Core, we give you that second chance to make things right. Because with our help, it's never too late. Well, I'm glad they've made better slogans since then. Oh, this is already, like, getting me a little emotional. Sometimes the path to memories are obstructed. Okay, so I can only go... Oh, shoot. Oh, I see. Alright, you're making things a little tougher on me. Damn. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Wait, how in the world? Oh wow, I was thinking maybe that was Asher as a kid, but no, we went real far back, childhood. Did we just skip his whole life? I don't know how this could have happened. But since we're here already, try transferring his signal from the last memory. Roger. Nope, not working. We might have leaped all the way, but the middle of the path is still uncleared. Then, what now? Are we stuck here? Eh, beats me. We're already here, though. Might as well look around. Hmm. Alright, well, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. So, already, I am pretty invested in the story of Colin and Sophia. Whereas, like, in To the Moon, his... His uh, wish was very apparent. It was to go to the moon. It was just the reason why. With this one, we don't even have a like concrete wish. It's just he has some regrets that he won't tell us about. And he wants to make things better, but not anything in particular. So we got to find out exactly what he wants to change and why. And I'm very intrigued by that. So this one is much more open-ended and vague. And that's makes me interested so i hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of finding paradise and stay tuned for the next episode next week until then bye special shout outs to my top tier patrons nana sparky icognito mad goldsmith harry gaziff and asborn kennedy